But first, we're going to start off the show on a more serious note, and then we'll lighten things up a little bit later. Uh, I was in Israel last month for, um, well, for a program called Birthright. Basically, it's all these young adults who go to Israel and explore the country, and it was great. I, I visited the Yad Vashem, which is the Holocaust Memorial uh, Museum there. For those that have been, you probably know it's a very, very emotional experience. It's very powerful. And I think the most powerful part of the museum is the testimonials from survivors that you can watch or listen to as you go through the museum. So hearing those eyewitness accounts to genocide is the best way, I think, to sort of fight against all those Mahmoud, uh, I mean, Dina Jads of the world and all these other crazy Holocaust deniers who would rather have us learn nothing from the Holocaust, from the six million Jews that perished during that period. And it is Holocaust Education Week, and to talk about the importance of documenting these kinds of atrocities before it's too late, before the survivors perish, I have on the line the filmmaker Riva Finkelstein from Toronto. Riva, welcome to CJD. Hi, Dan. So, Riva, you, have, you made a documentary recently called Healing Voices. I saw it at a screening at McGill last week. It follows a couple of Holocaust survivors as they tour um, concentration camps. Um, in some cases, the ones that they were at with a group of young adults who sort of uh, go to learn about the whole experience. So tell me a little bit about why you decided to embark on this journey with them. Well, um, doing a trip like this where I can learn about the Holocaust while survivors are still alive to, at those places was something I really wanted to do. And um, this was an opportunity that was available to students, and I was uh, doing my master's at Ryerson, so I was eligible for the trip. And I said to myself, I better do this now, go on this trip, because, you know, in a maybe give it five more years, we won't have uh, Holocaust survivors um, who can tell their stories on these trips anymore. And going in, what was your goal? Did you hope to educate uh, people who are non-Jewish, or w what, was, what was the purpose of the film? Oh, of the film. So um, the purpose of the film, basically because um, of the t this time limit that we're running out of time of being able to learn firsthand from survivors, um, I wanted to document what that experience is like because we all know that the personal stories are much more um, intimate, memorable, and real than what you're going to read in a textbook. Right, than stats. And mm. I wanted to you know, capture that experience because not everybody has an, oppor an opportunity like I did to go to Poland and Germany with Holocaust survivors as they revisit their memories. So for people in the future and for people today, they can get a taste of what it's like to learn about the Holocaust from firsthand uh, experiences. And who are some of the young people that actually went on this trip? Because it's, uh, it's, it's quite the experience. I mean, w are we talking only Jewish kids or... Who's going on the trip? This trip is called March of Remembrance and Hope, and it's a trip uh, that accepts Canadian university students from all across the country, all different racial, ethnic, religious backgrounds. Uh, the trip takes 60 students, and about six of them were Jewish. So it was a very, very diverse group. You had, all, like I said, all different religions and ethnicities, and it's basically to teach people about the dangers of hatred, intolerance, anti-Semitism and, um, and genocide and so that we have, you know, a better understanding of it and that we can come together as a diverse world and make it a better place. Did you go as a filmmaker or as a participant or as both? I mean, were there times when you just wanted to put down the camera and participate? Um, yeah, I went as a participant initially and after I got accepted on the program, I got the idea to produce this documentary. Um, I, it was difficult going as, as both because, yes, I constantly had my energy. It's a very intellectually and emotionally challenging trip. And, you know, but also my energy had to be put into filming and capturing it all and interviewing the survivors as we went along, you know. And um, so, yes, I was being pulled in, in many directions. There were some, time, some moments where I did put the camera down and I said, you know what, this afternoon I'm not going to film and I'm just going to enjoy the trip. I want to socialize with the people on my bus. I want to, but um, most of the time I did film, and it was interesting because it gave me like a purpose. You know, a lot of the things we saw were very shocking and very devastating, especially in the remnants of what's in the concentration camps. And at, while everyone was was crying, and I just I had a purpose. I I had the camera. I had to film it. I had to document it. So that was kind of like a barrier for me. I think emotionally. Um, but let me, I, 
tell you when I did watch the footage, um, had 17 hours of footage coming back from the trip, uh, that's when I, I teared up a little bit. Um, there was one moment on the trip where I could not film, and it was in the crematoriums in my Dunnick. Um, the crematoriums, to me, just symbolized the Shoah, the Holocaust, burning of the bodies, mm -hmm. and it just disgusted me too much that I could not think of, how am I going to film this? How am I going to frame this? You know, how am I going to make this look, you know, aesthetically appealing for my documentary? So that was the one place on the trip where I could not film. Okay, we're going to play a quick clip uh, from the film. This is uh, Reva Finkelstein's documentary, Healing Voices. So when I heard that wonderful non-Jews want to go on a trip to Berlin and to Poland and to all the concentration camps and especially Auschwitz when I am going to stand up and say, ah, you didn't get me. That's, I uh... Reva, that was one of the uh, the Holocaust survivors that went on this trip. Uh, quickly, before we let you go, uh, the website, by the way, healingvoicesfilm.com, if you want to check it out. Uh, give me one powerful moment in the film that really struck you. A powerful moment? Um, oh, God, there's so many. One of them is when that main character, Fagy Libman, who's a very energetic and opt opt a woman full of optimism, she's in Berlin, and she's like... I feel victorious. She says, I don't know what I, what I would expect because the last time she was on German soil was in 1945 when she was liberated. And she says, I'm in Germany. I feel victorious. We made it. And he, Hitler, did not make it. Very good. Reva Finkelstein, the uh, documentary filmmaker uh, behind Healing Voices and the website again, healingvoicesfilm.com. Uh, Reva, thanks for joining us. You're welcome, Dan. CJD time is 8.15.